please start om saraswati namastubhyam vadade kama rupini vidyarambham karishyami siddhir bhavatu me sada shruti smriti purana nam alayam karunalayam namami bhagavat padam shankaram loka shankaram purana nyaya mimamsa dharma shastranga mishrita vedaha sthanani vidyanam dharmasya cha chaturdasha ayurvedo dhanurvedo gandharvaschaiva tetraya अर्थ शास्त्र चतुर्तंतु विद्या अष्टादशवता ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इंडिका सेंटर फॉर भारतीय लैंग्वेजेस आई वेलकम हुअर इज जॉइन दिस टुडे फॉर अ कॉन्वर्जेशन विथ प्रदीप चक्रवर्ती ऑन द टॉपिक एंड इंट्रोडक्शन टू तमिल लिटरेचर दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन इन इंग्लिश intends to serve as an introduction to some facets of tamil literature as some might know tamil is one of the six languages indigenous to india and recognized by the government of india as a classical language tamil was recognized as a classical language by the government of india in 2004 making it the first among six that have been designated as classical by the government of india as per a press release found on the press information bureau website the criteria to determine the declaration of a classical language of a language as a classical language have been one high antiquity of its early texts recorded history over a period of 1500 to 2000 years a body of ancient literature texts which is considered a valuable heritage by generations of speakers the literary tradition be original and not borrowed from another speech community the classical language and literature being distinct from modern there may also be a discontinuity between the classical language and its later forms or its offshoots pradeep he is a graduate of the london school of economics and jnu an award winning student he has more than two decades of experience especially in learning and development his mission is to help people understand the present and future behavior by understanding the past his life is immersed in the history and heritage of tamil nadu his passion is connecting his corporate experience in tbs infosys cts and mckinsey to history he does heritage tours of tamil nadu and has recently opened anantya in the village the first heritage hotel for tirunelveli cuticorin districts in southern tamil nadu his focus is on making history relevant to children and adults in the corporate world he has authored nine books with a focus on the culture of tamil nadu and how history can help people improve performance at work he is passionate about the pandya kingdom and is working on a phd on their administration and has recently opened as i mentioned a heritage hotel deep within the kingdom close to one of the oldest inhabited villages of india and he's also had a homestay in that period he lives in chennai his most recent book is a translation with justice prabha shridev van retired uh, the title of which was essays of uve swaminathan iyer uvesa for short if not for uvesa according to the authors much of what is today understood as classical tamil might have been lost for ever it was largely because of his efforts that sangam poems and the great epics have survived to us the book has several essays that not only look at the history of tamil and tamil nadu but many anecdotes from the tamil nadu of the 19th and early 20th centuries this book has been published by niyogi books with support of the tamil nadu textbook society 
with that introduction i welcome pradeep for this conversation and i request you pradeep to take it away from here pradeep uh, you might need to unmute yourself thank you meg uh, very uh, very happy and honored to be here especially on the day of mahashivaratri uh, truly delighted to do this without further ado uh, let me get my slides opened uh, am i audible can can people see the slides see your slides are visible to me and you're audible great excellent thank you uh, so this is a this is in a way it's a very easy topic and in a way it's a very very difficult topic because tamil literature is is so vast that i can start anywhere and end anywhere and it will still be a great talk uh, or i can i can leave out most of the important stuff for different people and it can and i can get a lot of brickbats because of that i don't know which way it's going to do which is why i thought it's important for me to first set the context and the limitations um this talk is really a very very broad reading of a very small selection from tamil literature which is almost 2000 years old in fact little over 2000 years old uh, so it's impossible to cover all aspects of it uh, the presentation is primarily for non tamil scholars so people who may be connected with the language who may not know the language at all maybe from the region that's fine too and it's a very very biased uh, selection of uh, literature that i've taken these are these are verses that many of them i've learned in school many of them i learned when i was bringing my son up and i wanted him to learn some of these verses a for him to know about tamil which is his mother tongue and b for him to also use that wisdom from 1000 2000 years back to live his own life with the virtuousness uh so there's there's no rhyme or reason for why i've chosen some and why i've not chosen some yeah uh what this is not is certainly it's not an exhaustive treatise on the history of tamil it's impossible to do that in one hour and it's certainly impossible to probably even do it in a day you will just get a scattering of the emotion so uh, and it's certainly not comprehensive by any standard i mean 2100 2000 years old more than that uh, so much of literature available not just in tamil nadu but in in southeast asia and and in and in uh, sri lanka as well um, haven't even covered all of those and it's certainly not a linguistic or a philologist's account because um neither am i a linguist nor am i a philologist uh, so it's a very very so to to set the summary again it's a very biased very small very simple account of some uh some verses that have resonated deeply with me which i've strung together into some kind of a garland uh for shiva and for the for the goddess of tamar as well um i think ultimately tamar is so much a language as it is an emotion and let me try and explain this yes of course it's one of the world's most ancient languages that is still spoken today very very few languages which are mo- which is more than 2000 years old now the additional old study i think they push it now to 500 bc uh, so very few languages i think it probably in in single digits if i'm not mistaken of languages that have been continuously spoken till date and many words have not changed which is even more remarkable and 80 million people across the world speak it apart from india where it is an official language in malaysia in singapore and in sri lanka it's one of their official languages which is uh, uh, to my knowledge there are not many other indian languages which have this distinction um but fundamentally more than a language it's also a body of knowledge it's more technical a lot of it is ancient so it's it's not just and you'll see this as we go through the sangam poems you will see that it's not just the language it's not just the metaphors it's the sheer amount of information that we have on plants on trees uh, on on fauna on uh, mercantile traditions all of this is there in this language as well it's certainly a geographical glue that holds identities together because uh, the tamil that i speak in tamil nadu uh, heck the tamil that i speak in chennai may not be very common with the tamil that people speak in coimbatore and tirunelveli and certainly in, not in singapore or in sri lanka but still there's a connection as tamil people uh, which stands across geographies and uh, since time immemorial and you'll see that in one of the verses that i've chosen since time immemorial you'll also find that tamil has been treated as a living being as a goddess herself 
so if I can, at the end of this 30, 40 minutes of a presentation, if I can give you some sense of the richness of Tamil, I think it would have been time well spent and I have done a good job. So without without further ado, uh, let me jump into the into the uh, into the topic itself. This is a lovely image of a place called Jambai. Jambai is in Thiruko uh, uh, Taluk. Uh, it's on the banks of the Tenpenai River, which is one of our important rivers in Tamil Nadu. Um, this is just outside the village, surrounded by rice fields. And what's important are there are more rocks like this. One rock is called the Dasi Madam and the other is called the Sanyasi Madam. Uh, and this area was a megalithic site. So we've had continuous inhabitation uh, for at least about three, 4,000 years. In one of these places is a rock bed. And on that rock bed is an inscription which reads Satyaputo Adhyan Neduma Nanji. That's all it says. Very, very simple. This is in Brahmi letters. So now, of course, we are using the word Tamari rather than Brahmi. This is in the script. It means uh, this is an abode given by Satyaputra Neduman Anji. And it was given to a Jain monk. This is considered one of our earliest inscriptions in Tamil. So Tamil letters and Tamil alphabet is from about 2000 years old but tamil itself and now they're saying in the other channel of excavations they're they're uh, they're pushing the date even further back but what we definitely know is tamil has been written down for at least 2100 years maybe a little bit more it's certainly a language that is much much older than that further off closer to the tambraparni river this looks like a a piece of uh, porumbo land if, if you wouldn't probably even glance at it as you are driving but this is one of our richest archaeological sites in tamil nadu this is adichanallur it's about 100 acres uh, and we know that at least from 500 bc onwards this has been continuously inhabited. Adichanalur is on the banks of the Tambraparni River, which is very much down south in Tamil Nadu. The Tambraparni River eventually joins the old Pandya port of Kailpatnam. Uh, and then, of course, the sea moved or the port, the river also moved. And therefore, the Pandyas probably moved their capital from there onwards to Madurai, which, which was the traditional capital of the Pandyas. Adichanalur is a site where which was far more multicultural than many parts of Tamil Nadu are today. Uh, there have been bones that have been excavated in other channels since the 19th century. We found gold, we found iron, we found what is uh, in South India's oldest bronze, which is this humble image of a mother goddess is really, really tiny. So I apologize about the small, the, the poor quality of the photograph. It's just about three, four inches tall, but this is a watershed movement for us because we know that even uh, even 2000 years back, uh, our people used to know how we could fashion multiple metals together and create a bronze image. And then, of course, there is the gold that was found as well. Um, Adha Chanalur has also yielded skeletons. And we have skeletons of uh, East Africans. We have skeletons of Australoid bones as well. So clearly, it was a very, very multicultural society in those days. Of course, all of them were coming for the trade, Tamil Nadu and the Pandyas in particular. Um, any, any film that you see in Roman times, Cleopatra or Troy or whatever, most of the good stuff that they used came from India. And uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, of course, at that time, Kerala wasn't separate. Kerala was a part of Tamil Nadu. It was part of the Tamil culture as well. We made a lot of money selling goods from here onwards to Arabia and then onwards to Europe as well. Um, not too far off from Adha Chinnalur again is Podike Malay. Uh, and this is a very sacred for all of us in Tamil Nadu and for those who love Tamil, because this was the abode of Saint Agastya. Agastya is one of the Sapta Rishis. His wife is Lopamudra. Uh, Agastya is a dwarf. He is he's seen as a very short person with a long beard. Um, he has a connection not just to Tamil Nadu, but to uh, Badami and K Karnataka as well. It is Agastya who migrated from the north to the south to do two things. One was to lessen and shorten the height of the Vindhya Mountains and also to, uh, to drink the oceans and uh, make it easier for Tamil Nadu as a landscape to emerge. And in the process of doing this, he also ate up the Asuras, Iwala and Vatapi, and which is how Badami was created. So Karnataka tradition and Tamil Nadu tradition, there's a connection with each other. Agastya's claim to fame in Tamil Nadu was he is credited with creating the Tamil language. 
And the first thing that he did was the first book that he wrote probably was the Agathyam, which was a Tamil grammar work. Unfortunately, we don't have the Agathyam, but we do have the Tulkapiam, which is probably a little older, which is a little younger than the Agathyam. But with the Tulkapiam, we come into the wonderful world of Sangam literature. The word Sangam means a gathering of poets. Uh, and it is said that there were two Sangams even before the one that we hear about. The one that we talk about as the third Sangam, the dates are roughly about 3rd century BCE to the 3rd century ACE, uh, CE. So we're talking about, uh, about roughly around 2,000, 800,900 years ago. Uh, this was a group of poets who came together. These poets sang songs. All of them are usually very short songs, about 8 to 10 lines. Uh, and these songs were collated together, and that is this corpus of Sangam literature. So when we look at Sangam literature, we need to look at first Tolkapiyam, which is our very important grammar work. In the Tolkapiyam, there's an important verse that I will read out. Mayon meya kadura yulakamum, seyon meya maivara yulakamum, vendan meya timbona lulakamum, varunan meya peruman ulakamum, so it says, So it says, Mayon is the God or who became Vishnu later on. Mayon is the God who looks after the Kad or the Mullay Nilam or the forest landscape. Seyon is Murugan. He looks after the uh, mountains so, like the Podage hills. Vendan is Indra. Indra looks after the Marudam or the Timbunal is the Pastoral landscape, the, the Kaveri Delta, the Tamrapani river banks, all of this. Varuna and Maya Perumano, like Varuna is the god of the Nadal or of the seashore. And he says, Mullai Kurinji Marudam Nadal and a Cholia Murayar Soldavam Padme. Whether you speak or sing, these four eco zones are very important in the Tamil country. Now, when water did not come to these four reasons, they would be desertified. And that region was called the Pale. So later on, Pale also became a Tenai. These, uh, these eco zones are called Tenai in Tamil. Everything connected with life in those days. We're talking about 3rd century BC to 3rd century CE. Everything connected was connected to the, uh, to the region that they lived in or the Tenai that they lived in. The food they ate, the liquor they drank, the gods they worshipped. The chieftains that they had, uh, the, the music that they sang, the instruments that they played, and of course the trade they did and the occupations that they followed. Everything was connected to the uh, to the eco zone. So truly, I think I think one thing that we can learn from that time is how closely their lives, their emotions, and their thoughts were linked to the region that they lived in. I think they really followed environmental consciousness and being one with nature in every sense of the term. So when we look at uh, the history of Tamil and the reason that it's a classical language is because even from that early period, not only do we have an important grammatic grammar, uh, uh, grammar work, we also have these wonderful songs from there. These songs from that Sangam are split into three parts. You have the Ettutogai, the Patapata, and the Padinan Kirkanaka. In the Ettutogai are two broad sets. One is the Ahananura and the other is the Pananarura. The Ahananura is a set of poems that talk about the needs and feelings we have uh, fundamentally as human beings that transcend all time and all locations. So it's about love, it's about yearning, it's about companionship, it's about all the loneliness and the sadness that comes when two lovers are parted from each other. All of this is in the Ahananura. The Puranaanura talks about war and heroes and themes like that. The Patupata and the Patinapale and many others are all much more uh, bardic poems. So they're more, they might have combinations of both, but they're more descriptive in nature. The Padin and Kir Kanaka is a, is, a, is a much more assorted combination. Many of these are our law books as well, like the Tirukural, and we will see some of these as well. So I'm going to take a couple of songs from this. It's, it's of course, one of the richest parts of Tamil literature. They've been well translated. In fact, there's some really good ones online as well. I think some a lady called Vaidehi has done a very good job. And then, of course, there is the A.K. Ramanujam book as well, which is a classic. Uh, fortunately, today, many of these have been translated and lovers of literature can learn them anywhere. 
but it behoves all of us who have some connection to Tamil to learn at least a few of them and certainly practice a few of them in our lives as well. There's a very random selection that I've taken uh, from this. I'm just going to go with one of them, which is called, which is from the Athanan Ura. This is a poem uh, by Paranar, which is set in the Kurunji Tenet. So this is the mountain landscape. The association of love associated with the mountain landscape is one of elopement or color. Uh, so let me read just the first few lines to get give you a sense of what the language sounds like. And I'll give you a more detailed translation. Irimburi Mari Arungal Mudar Viravu Irayenum Tunjad Ahum Malil Lavanam Marukadan Madian Vallurai Kudum Vallurai Kadum Solanai Tunjal Pinikol Anjire Annai Tunjin. So this is how the verse starts. It's a long verse. And let me give you an understanding of what the translation is. This loud town where liquor flows like the rain will not sleep even when there are no festivals. Even when the prosperous markets and streets go to sleep, mother with the strong and harsh words, she does not sleep. Why doesn't her mother sleep? The heroine is telling this to her friend. Mother doesn't sleep because her mother knows that her daughter is going to elope with this hero because it's set in the Kurunji tenet. Even if mother holds us tight and guards strictly uh, guards around us, even if they sleep, the guard, sorry, even the guards who don't sleep and they are also move rapidly around. Uh, even the young men with bright lances sleep. The dogs with sharp peeps and right curled tails, they start barking. Even if the loudly barking dogs go to sleep, the white moon spreads its rays in the skies and it appears like the day. But even if the moon reaches the mountains and there is pitch darkness, the house rat eating uh, strong mouth owls, they hoot in the night. Uh, where all the gulls are roaming about. But even if the male, the owls with the round eyes, if they stop hooting and they go to sleep, the house roosters start crowing loudly. So even if everyone has gone to sleep, he who my heart is not away from and is pining away, will he not come? So many hindrances we face in wanting to just meet this man, let alone eloping with him, just meeting this man. These hindrances, she's telling her friend, are like those faced by the travelers who go through the rock-filled, mature, protective forests of Urandai city, which is surrounded by strong walls that belong to the King Titan, who has swift, fine horses that leap and run straight, wearing pebble-filled anklets on their feet. So in one song, you get to see how the city would have looked like, right? I mean, there were liquor shops, there were guards, there were people, there were tradesmen. And, and the, the stunning part of Sangam literature is the detailed description of nature. I mean, we here we know of owls, we hear of, uh, of uh, mountains, uh, even down to the flower of a tamarind, uh, which turns green to red. Even that much of detail Sangam poets have looked at. So this is from the Agana Nora, from the Atitoge. Many, many other poems uh, that even if you even if you are not conversant with Tamil, even somebody like me who's reasonably conversant with Tamil, I can't understand those texts, that words. Very difficult for us to understand. But even with the translation, what shines through is their phenomenal attention to detail and that oneness with nature of even noticing very, very small changes in flowers and plants and animals and, and water and landscape as well. So this is from the Ahana Nura. The Purana Nura is, of course, it's a, it's a set of verses on kings and war and what makes a hero. And here is a, a verse that I have that, that I'm very fond of, which is what a mother says as what is the duties of people. Uh, this is from this is verse number 312. Uh, this is song, sung by somebody called Ponmudiyar. So must have been a lady. The thing I hear is Vahe. Vahe is the flower that was worn by warriors who were victorious. So this is a woman who is singing in that world. And of course, many, as I, I didn't mention this before, many, many of the poems in the Sangam period were, were sung by women poets. Indra Purattarul Yen Talai Kadane. Sandro Nakudal, Tandaik Kadane, Vail Vadit Kudutal, Kolar Kadane, Nanade Nangal, Vendar Kadane, Wundruval Arunjum, Marungi Kilandre, Yerindi Pairdal, Kalaik Kadane. So, Yindra Purataral, Yendale Kadane. My duty, Rina Kadane is really a debt. My debt is to give birth to the child. Sandro Nakudan, Tandaik Kadane. 
so the job the debt of making him a wise man is the father's job vel vadithal koduthal porkol kollarku kadale so the job of giving him the debt of giving him a strong spear is the job of a blacksmith to get him a war to fight is the job of the king but to use that spear to fight with those elephants and bring victory that is the boy's job kale ke kadane that is the job of the boy so i think in a way it tells us that look as human beings as only even as parents even as a mother and a father and a king there is only this much that we have to do or in a way if you flip it is the other way also others can only help us this much ultimately our job so in in the context of mahashivaratri as pasus all of us have to go to our pati and go take go away from our pasam ultimately sure uh, shiva will help uh, poets will help philosophers will help ultimately my journey of joining shiva is about me doing it myself that's really what this uh, this poet is saying moving on from this is patipata and madurai kanji uh, patipata and out of this madurai kanji and patna palaya two that i've chosen patna palaya is important i'll come back to that a little later there's a story around it um, madurai kanji and is a text on the greatness of madurai and it uh, mangudi mardanar is a poet and he describes madurai in extraordinary detail so we know that madurai was surrounded by a moat we know that the doors were made out of wood and they were black in color and they were regularly oiled and on top of the fort doors was a wonderful image of gajalakshmi and inside there were many groves there were many streets generally people communities tended to live together and in these streets there were many many flags so um, from the distance looking at the color of the flag looking at the image on the flag you could know what was there and you could go and join that group if you wanted to uh, we hear about all the goods and produces that were sold over there in the bazaar certainly looked like you know there's another there's another lovely verse called tandi alangaram which says you know madurai or kanchi i think it's about kanchi though it says you can't find all the things that you find in kanchi puram inside the ocean but everything within the ocean you can find in kanchi so you decide which is better kanchi puram or the ocean the uh, uh, this is actually a text on how to write good poetry and this is one of the you know different metaphors and similes these are this teaches it but coming back to madurai kanchi we even hear about how the city never sleeps there are restaurants open all the time and then of course there's a lot of description on what kind of food is served and we also hear of how in the night um, there are uh, the, the time is announced by watchman ever so often by by drum beat and in the night when everybody is sleeping safely and quietly there are a lot of burglars who wear disguises who prowl about but then the police forces in madurai are so good that these burglars get caught all the time the patina pale is a similar um, um, a similar text on the beauty of puhar i'll just read one short translation it talks about the public kitchens in kaveri pumbatnam um, it says that the their fame is so much uh, and there is a lot of public kitchens with tightly fitting doors bear, bearing the emblem of the tiger which is a chola symbol uh, inside that special building is left even to the uh, is even to the height of a grass but this padinar kal mandapam of the 16 pillar hall alone i have left over because my war is with the chola king my war is not with tamil just as much as the cholas love their tamil so do i so this mandapam that was gifted by the king for this poet for this patina pale i am leaving that alone so that's how tamil transcended boundaries it transcended rivalries and it taught king and in fact in that he says the chola king who rules with dharma aram valart so he says even says that he, to you know the the passion of tamil to allow a bitter enemy of a king to even then acknowledge what that other the enemy king has done well i think that's really the true true test of uh, learning knowing and following tamil so this is from the patu patu the padinan kanaka is a large set of texts uh, the parmari nanura is something that i am very fond of um, it's about 90 odd verses all of them around four lines each um, one of them that i like is uh, the difference between a wise man and an uh, and a fool and it says tantu ki tunetu ki payantu ki matradu kolla madivalla ratrantri aadanam undu seyade aadanam undraagum so he says um, there is only one difference between wise people and people who are not so wise and the difference is that wise people whenever they start doing 
something, they ask three questions. Tantu ki. Will it benefit me? Will I grow because of this? Tunai tu ki. Who others can help me on this? Payan tu ki. If I do this with the help of that person, how will it help the larger community? Because they ask these three questions and they get the right answer, only then they will start doing it. Because they do it this way, everything will ben- every- everybody will benefit. Fools, on the other hand, will not ask these three questions. They will also do something. They will also get some benefit. But because they don't ask these three questions, the benefit will not be so high. So there are many others like this. The Paramahina Anur, given the first uh, verse, is probably a Buddhist text. The Asara Kove is from the 5th century. Uh, this is about 100 songs. This deals with the body and the mind. So all of you who are looking for tips on wellness, Asara Kove is, is an excellent text to look at. I'll give you just very, very few uh, very few review, um, uh, recommendations on the Asara Kove. It says, um, eat, eat after a bath and before you eat, wash your hands. Uh, wake up early in the morning. Uh, you Brush your teeth for sure. Bathe with uh, with clothes on. I think I uh, I think this is probably a real uh, 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 an indication that Asara Kove was written by somebody who was not so fond of the Jains because the Jains the Digambara Jains were very popular at that time and they they strode about without wearing any clothes. And then um, it is best to have the sweet first and have something bitter in the end. And it says gargle after you've eaten, gargle your food well, spit and clean your uh, uh, teeth and do this at least three times. Uh, and it says, speak very carefully. If you don't want to have any diseases in your life, don't sleep alone in a ruined house. Don't sleep alone in a temple or certainly don't sleep next to a cremation ground and don't sleep during the day. For those of us who like our naps on Sunday, Asara Kova is not so keen on that. And then of course, there is a Tirukural, which is an ocean of knowledge. Uh, it deserves a separate, a separate lecture. Um, something that I like in the Tirukural, I think going back to the Asaro Kovai theme, is many of the many of the Kurals are on health and, and wealth. Uh, so for example, it says if you need to, if you if we need to get good medicine, um, the person who is giving the medicine has to be very, very sure about who is being treated, what the what the specific uh, issues or the symptoms are and then prescribe certain crores. Uh, and it says that the patient, the doctor, the medicine and the pharmacist uh, are the most important people that and all of them need to follow certain rules uh, and the what, the why and how the medicine should be given should all be very clearly mentioned. So many, many other ins- uh, the many, many other uh, messages like this. The Thirukural, of course, is one of our most important texts. It is very likely that many of the texts from the Padan and Kirkanath may have been written by Jains. Because by this time, uh, we're talking about the second, third century of the common era, Jains and Buddhists become more and more common and powerful in Tamil Nadu. And it is likely that it is they who brought in these law texts and these Aram texts, basically texts on high living. Because earlier on in the Sangam period, I think there were much less social uh, constraints on how one had to live life. So moving from Sangam literature, we move into one of our big topics, which is the, the big, great epics. Silapadigaram is from about the 3rd century CE. Jivagasintha, and it is Hindu, Jain, it's got a mixture of everything. Jivagasinthamani is, uh, is a Jain epic. Valayapati is also a Jain epic. Unfortunately, the Valayapati, we don't have it at all. Both of these are from about the 10th century. Manimekala is a Buddhist text. Uh, from the 10th century, again, Kundalakesi is also a Buddhist text. Unfortunately, we don't have the Kundalakesi as well. But between the Silapadigaram, Jeevika Sintamani and Manimekala, we have a very, very good idea of what was daily life like, especially the mercantile community. There's a lot of mentions of the merchants in, in the Silapati Garam, in Puhar especially. Uh, if, for example, when, when Kanagi and Kovalan who are the hero and the heroine of Silapati Garam, when they move to Madurai, uh, Ilanko Adigal also almost mentions about 24 different varieties of trees. And the last meal that Kanagi and Kovalan have together, the dishes are mentioned, how the dishes are served. I mentioned so much of detail in the Silapati Garam. The Jeevika Sintamani is more a story of 
Jeevagan, who is like the Yayati story. He gets married many times. He has a lot of affairs. And ultimately, he realizes the more and more we pander to our senses, the less and less we are happy in the long term. Mani Meghale is the story of Mani Meghale, who was a daughter of uh, Kanagi and Kovalan. And it is her life and how she realizes that the ultimate truth is the uh, is under the Sharana of uh, Buddha and the and the Sangha. Uh, these texts are uh, if we could not have got these texts if not for Uve Saminadayar, which is why we need to spend a little bit of time talking about him. And what's interesting is one of the essays that I've translated in the book is there's a proverb, and in the proverb, uh, it's Uve Sa is, is unsure about how to explain that proverb because he finds it in Jeevika Sintamani, and then. Uh, Totally by happenstance, he ha he hosts lunch for somebody and he is not paying attention to what that person is saying. But as that person is speaking, he uh, he uses the same proverb and this uh, enchants Uvesa and he is able to, because of that, uh, that uh, lunch, he is able to um, decipher the proverb. So these proverbs, uh, the proverb is, Kallar Pulie Ver Kaniya is the proverb, uh, Come Thief Punch the Tiger. And because this proverb has survived from Jeevaka Sintamani's time till the 19th century. But unfortunately, today, our, our knowledge and our way of speaking Tamil is so uh, limited, we've lost many of these proverbs. So this is some, an interesting anecdote that I wanted to share of how uh, the religion might have changed. Uvesa struggled a lot to understand Jeevaka Sintamani and a lot more for Buddhism and Mani Mekalai, because by then, Buddhism in Tamil Nadu had completely gone away. At least Jains, there were some people living. Um, but the language richness hadn't changed and many of these words were still used. Uh, just a quick time check. How are we doing on time? We have about another 10, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, I'm going to rush a little bit. Um, and then from the 10th century onwards, actually from the 6th, 6th, 7th century onwards itself, the great uh, contribution in Tamil is of the Bhakti movement. We have the 12 Alvars and the 63 Nayanvars. Not all the 63 Nayanmars composed songs, but many of them did. The earliest Nayanmar was Karika Lamyar, a lady. Uh, but the most important ones were the ones who lived in the in the 7th century uh, and the uh, 8th, 9th century, which was Samanda Rappar, who both lived in the 7th century, Sundarar, who lived in the 8th century, and Manik Vasagar, who lived in the 9th century. The, the uh, collected works of all the Nayanmars and other saints like Thirumula were all put together and Teriya and, and Sekhya who wrote the stories on these 63 saints. They are all put together as a part of uh, 18,349 verses, which is the 12 books on Shiva. The 4,000 verses on Thirumal is called the Nalaya Divya Pravandam. Uh, all, fortunately, unlike the Sangam poems, these texts are very much in practice. People recite them, they know them, many of them sing them, they dance them. They're very, very current in the in the community today, which is a good thing. Uh, it's impossible to choose something from each of these. I'm going to take a very, very random choice. From the from the verses on Tirumal and the Devya Prabandham, I have taken something from the early Alvars. In fact, we don't even know their names. We just know Poyghe Alvar and uh, and Buddha Tarvat. So Poyghe is a is a lay, it's a water body. And Budham is the Panchabudas or the five elements. So we don't even know their names. They must have probably lived around the 3rd, 4th century, something like that. Uh, I'm going to read one verse of Poike Arva to give you a sense of the words and the sentiment as well. Vayam takaliya varkadal neyaha veyakadiron velakaha veya sudar armin adike sutinen solmale he says, the earth is my lamp, the ocean is my oil, the sun is the flame, and I offer this garland of songs at the feet of the radius, radiant Lord who bears the chakra or Tirumal, uh, so that we might cross the ocean of misery, which is the Samsara Sagara. Buddha Tharwar has another verse as he starts his, it's also a lovely one. Anbe thagaliya arvame neya Love is my lamp, um, the eagerness is my oil, and my heart is the wick, and melting myself 
I have lit, lit this lamp and offer in Tamil this garland of verses in Tamil and of knowledge to the one who rules the world. So two verses from the Divya Pravadam. Um, from the 12 books of the of Shaiva, I've taken Samanda. Uh, he sings on Tirumarukul. Um, it's usually sung by an Oduvar. Um, and I'm going to try to do my best because I'm not qualified to sing that way. So if there are any mistakes, uh, please, I crave your indulgence. So the Samanda from the 7th century is a boy saint, one of the most um, eloquent of the Nine Mars. Uh, a young a young child who who traveled pretty much the length of the Tamil country singing in praise of Shiva. Sadaya yenumal sharani yenumal vidaya yenumal veruvo virimal madayar kuvallai malarum maruhal udaya thagumo. So he says, Sadaya Yanumal, Sharani Yanumal, Vidaya Yanumal. So he says, uh, Oh, I want that man with the matted locks, Shiva. Um, he is my only refuge. Uh, oh, he is the one who uh, who rides the uh, Vidai or the Bullock, uh, the, the, the bull. Um, and saying all this, she faints away. O oh, Shiva who lives in Marugal, uh, surrounded by many <laughs> by many water bodies filled with lotuses, what are you doing to this girl? Is this the right thing to do? Shouldn't you come and save her? This is Samandha's verse. And he goes on to sing a few more. Uh, this verse is important in two ways. And in the Divya Prabandham, Vishnu is also uh, sung in many verses like this, of where in unique, I think, to the Tamil tradition, is where God is seen as a lover, as a child, as one among us. And I think that's the richness of the bhakti poems in Tamil. Uh, and, and at a deeper level, what Samandar is saying is all of us have this yearning to be with the pati. As a pasu, all of us as, a, as an animal, we yearn to be with our Lord Shiva uh, as pati. And uh, in the more and more we explore why we are like this, the more and more we try to reach that person, the more and more we find ourselves also. So this is a very, this is a concept or a, or a deep uh, philosophic insight of how the more we find uh, ourselves in others, in helping others, the more we find ourselves. And in other words, the Marva has this wonderful verse called Nidhiya Kadimai. In that also, he mentions a very similar, very similar uh, Philosophy where he says, if you need to find Vishnu, and I think in, in this context, if you need to find Shiva also, you need to find it by serving others. And the crux of Tirumular's Tirumandram is also about this. So in all of this, in very simple Tamil, uh, these were these saints sang about how to find ourselves, how to find God within ourselves. It is not by just, of course, it was by looking at him in the temples but it was also by looking at serving other people around us. And in this way, using very simple Tamil, both the Alvars and the Nayanmas, not only able to convert many people in Tamil Nadu back to Shaivism or, or uh, Vaishnavism, they were also able to encourage people to be kinder to others and not just human beings, to the environment as well. And I think in a way it went back to that old Tamil Sangam tradition of recognizing that God is in nature and nature is God. Now, these people also sung at a time when uh, there was a lot of antipathy towards Jains and Buddhists. Uh, but keeping that aside, I want to sing one more verse. This is from Karur Tevar. This is from the ninth Rumare. Karur Tevar lived much later. In fact, he was the saint who sang about both Gangikunda Cholaparam and Rajaraja Chola's Brahadishwara temple. Um, so, in this, this, I'm just going to sing it one time and then show you how the Odwar community or people who really know the both the Sot Chuvai and the Purul Chuvai, which is the, the, the nectar of the words and the nectar of the meaning, how they could repeat different words from different parts, string the sentence together and make the song far more powerful. Uh, so let me sing it the regular way first. And I'm going to move the mouse along with the words. So even if you don't understand Tamil, you can see how a person who truly feels for Tamil, who truly understands the, the language and the sentiment of the poet, 
can string random words together form a sentence that still makes sense yeah ulagelam thola vanda yel kadir parade onru nooraiyiram kodi alagelam podinda tiruudambu acho angane alagu ido aranam palagulam padese nedenilai maadam paruvare nyanyar venti So this, of course, they will do in a much more refined way. The whole world comes to pray, including the sun, uh, which has uh, which has and Kodi, which has a hundred rays of effulgence. Alakhelam Pudinda Thiruvudamba and all that effulgence is nothing compared to this beautiful Ling, Shiva Linga, which is inside. Angane, Igardo, Aranam. This is where you need to go. Palagulam, Padese, the place where there are many people living. Nedinele Madam, which has a long wall. Paruvare Nyanir Vent Tingal, which is a lovely place. Ilagulam, Padanati, Injishu, Tanjay. So, in this place of Tanjavur, which is surrounded by moats, Rasarat Shechura, Tevarke, all of them come to pray as Rasarat Shechura, at Rasarat Shechura, which is Bradishura inside the temple. Now, um, Let's do this. Ulakelam Todavand Inji Shurtanje Rasara Se Churati Varke. So the whole world comes to Inji Shurt uh, to the Tanjaur with the moat where Rasara Se Churam, uh, the deity is there. Ulakelam Todavand Inji Shurtanje Tiruudam Bacho Yer Kadir Paradi Undu Nura Irangodi. Todavand Rasara Se Churati. So when a when an Oduar could take, and of course this, the impact is more if you understand the language really well, uh, it looks like each of these words don't have a connection with each other in another sentence. But a person who really understands the language well and the meaning well can pick all these words in different ways and keep coming back to the main content of the song, which is the entire world comes to Tanjay's Rasa Rasa Churam to pay obeisance. And again and again, all of these words, so follow my cursor over here, all my words will come back and say Tanjay Rasa Rasa Chura Tivarke. This, these are really the core words. So Tarot Tevar wants us all to come and pray to Rasa Rasa Churam because the whole world is coming. And the song can be sung in many ways to make this happen. Moving on from there, these are unfortunately songs that are not well explored. There are many inscriptions on the walls of temples which have poems in them. Uh, and many of these are, of course, in the Nelayapar Kovil and Tinalveli is one of the finest of them because it has many verses like this. Most of the verses are actually on a king or on a donor or a benefactor. Some of them are not. This is a very rare swastika shape. Uh, temple tank near the Perumal temple in Tiruvallare, not very far off from Tiruchi. And this tank is constructed in such an ingenious way that people who are having a bath here cannot see the other. So even in those days, they had a sense of private uh, privacy. On the walls of this tank, this was probably from the 8th century or maybe a little earlier, Danti Varman is the king who seemed to have built it uh, or a, somebody else built it on his in his reign. So the song, this is a verse here and I'm sure it would have been sung in those days. Kandarhana Ulagathe, Kadal Say the Nilla De, Pande Paramanadi Nal Paranda Nindre, Vaya De, Tandal Tandal Muppu Vande, Unai Talara Che the Nilla Mun, Unde Lunde, Mikha the Ulaka Maria Vaimine. So Kandarhana Ulagathe, Kadal Say the Nilla De. Everything in this world is impermanent. Even the person that you met one minute before may not be around. So don't feel too much of love towards this world which is impermanent pande paravan padaitha nal paartha nindru neyyade so this god paraman shiva has already marked an expiry date for you don't keep obsessing about when that date is going to happen because you don't know when it is and it's not under your control anyway tandal muppu vandu unnai thalara cheyda nillamun before you get the third stick to keep you steady, which is the walking stick, before that happens, 
உண்டேல் உண்டு ஈட் வாட் யூ நீட் டேக் வாட் யூ நீட் பட் எவ்ரி திங் எல்ஸ் உலகம் அறிய வெய்மினே ஸோ உலகம் அறிய சு தட் த ஹோல் வேர்ல்ட் நோஸ் கிவ் இட் அவே திஸ் இஸ் அ லவ்லி வேர்ஸ் ஓவர் ஹியர் um and there are many other verses like this on the walls of temples all of these have been translated into english they have been published but sadly they are not very much into the concert circuit and so on uh apart from this in the vijayanagar period we are talking about the 15th 16th century tamil continue to have a very very rich tradition now there are many many texts at this time you know there are things like the ula which is where the king goes on procession thood which is when a lover sends a message across uve samanadhar for example discovered many thood i am just going to read out a few of them there's one called manvida thood which is a lover sending a deer as an emissary one which is tendral vida thood sending the uh, the breeze as an emissary uh, kill uh, killi vidathoodu is sending a parrot pohayale vidathoodu which is sending tobacco leaves this is from murugan the thoodu that was written vandu vidathoodu sending a bee tamil vidathoodu sending tamil itself this is written in madurai and nenji vidathoodu which is sending the heart and saying you know this is a message that i have go and send this to my lover and then there there are, of course there are kuravanji there are many like this but one poet that i would like to talk about is a little bit of humor as well which is a wonderful man called kalameha pulavar we actually we we think his name was varadhan we don't know much about him we know that he lived in the 15th century but he was a amazing riot when it came to using humor and he was i mean of course sladai is is something that's been there across india across many other countries as well but he really put tamil on the map with sladai sladai is basically using the same words you can interpret it in two different ways and he took the more bizarre combination so for example he had one where how do you let me tell you how a cobra a king cobra a snake and a lemon you know what we eat the lemon juice how a king cobra and a lemon are the same i mean how can you even think of how you somebody can compare a cobra to a lemon yeah or another one was about how a fish and lice lice that one gets on the hair how are these two the same so we have like really bizarre combinations like this i've just picked one from this which is something i think you can if you look at the image that i've chosen you'll understand why i picked this he says a dog and a coconut are the same and let's see what he says yeah um odum irukkum adan ulvai velithirukkum naadum kulai thanakku naanaadu seediye thing thingane thingana thilla thirumalai rayan arayil thengayum naayum onnena cheppu so the second the third line is always the same it's uh, it's about tirumalai raya o oh, chediye or the lady who is fond of tirumalai raya or something just say that a coconut and a dog are the same now let's these are the last two lines which are not really important the first two lines are important because this is where the word play happens odum irukkum od means the outer shell of the coconut it also means to run so if you are interpreting it for a coconut it is a coconut has a shell if you are interpreting it for a dog it means a dog runs and it stops yeah adanul vai velithirukum the inside of the mouth is white in color or light in color you cut open a coconut the coconut is white in color you open the mouth of a dog the dog's inside of the mouth is much darker than the outside yeah naadum kulai thanakku naanaadu so naanaadu here means it's not shy a coconut is not kulai tanak means kulai in for a coconut will be a group so a coconut is always found in a group you never find a coconut by itself so a coconut is never shy of being in a group the kulai can also mean barking so a dog is a dog is never shy of barking therefore or one or one who loves tirumala raya tell people bravely that a coconut and a dog are the same there are many many others like this of uh, kalameka pulavar um i think people should really learn more of kalameka pulavar songs because it teaches creativity in presentation skills yeah then finally we come to this wonderful man ove samanadaya uh he lived uh, he was born in the 19th century died in the 1940s if not for ove sa's efforts we would have not got the sangam literature we would have not got the um, the uh, the important epics which is why tamil is a classical language because by the time he was born uh 
people in Tamil Nadu had completely focused only on the Bhakti literature, which is the Devi Prabandham and the Tevaram and the, the, the Thirumurai and the much later epics, like the, you know, the, the two of those that I was telling you. People had forgotten Sangam literature in that early period. One was because, you know, it was only it, it, people were more Bhakti focused. The second was also some of the uh, ancient literature was in Jainism and Buddhism. Buddhists had completely gone out of Tamil Nadu. Jainism was a very small population. He took it upon himself to go and find all of these, collate them, write commentaries, weed out what was the irrelevant part, what was interpolated, what was wrong, and publish them. Uh, it sounds like an easy job today, but remember, no transport facilities in those days, uh, no computers in those days. Everything had to be, and, and um, you know, many times, and he talks about this in his wonderful autobiography, he would be stuck because one word, he didn't understand what the meaning was. Uh, it's a Buddhist text. You don't understand Buddhist philosophy. There's nobody around to check on Buddhism. There's no internet to check. How does he find out? So these are the kind of problems that he had. And if and there is one very interesting essay where he talks about how he goes to Alvar Tirnagari. And three days he searches in the in the libraries of the poets. And it gives you a sense of the richness of Tamil. Everywhere he goes, tiny, tiny villages. So many people who had who were poets who were there with love, huge libraries. There's one story where there's a cartman where he knows poems. There's another one where there's a beggar. A beggar knows so much of uh, excellent Tamil poems. And uh, he's not able to find anything. Last day, last night, he he finds this one manuscript, which is the Mullay part. And mm -hmm. if not for that one day, that one perseverance and that one text, this whole Mullay part, we would have never known in the uh, in Sangam literature. So many, many stories like this. Uvesa's book, In Charitram, which has also been translated to English, is an excellent autobiography that tells you what daily life like was like in Tamil Nadu of that time. We have even some fascinating information on how most people tended to eat more millets than rice. And uh, dowry was paid by the groom to the bride rather than the other way around. We have information like this. Uvesa really put Tamil, classical Tamil in the map. And we should, anything, anything that we talk about Tamil, we should remember him. Uh, and uh, moving on, I know I stopped uh, my Tamil. I, I spent a lot more time in the, in the Bhakti movement and in the, uh, in the Sangam period. But it will be very, very wrong of me if I don't uh, mention Bharatya in the context of Tamil. So I thought I'll do one step better rather than just talk about Bharatya. I'll play one of his songs, lovely rendition by uh, Sri Sikil Gurucharan. So let's listen to this as we end our, uh, our talk on some glimpses of Tamil literature. I hope you can hear it. Ninjik needi yum tolik valumi rain the chuder money pool. Ninjik needi yum tolik valumi rain the chuder money pool. Ninjik needi yum tolik valumi rain the chuder money pool. Panjik ne palakum bangala vivat parvek ne perundi. Panjikne palakum bangala vivat parvaki ne perundi. Panjan yindri pagai yindri chudindri vayaga madarela. Panjan yindri pagai yindri chudindri vayaga madarela. Tanjam yendre puri piraval pe shakti vam shakti vam shakti vam. शक्ति मनमे शक्ति अचमीदी 
சக்தி ஓம் சக்தி வெள்ளை மலர் மிசை வேத கரு பொருளாக விளங்கிடுவார் வெள்ளை மலர் மிசை வேத கரு பொருளாக விளங்கிடுவார் தெள்ளு தமிழ் கலை வாணி நில பொரு விண்ணமும் செய்திடுவே தெள்ளு தமிழ் கலை வாணி நில பொரு விண்ணப்பம் செய்திடுவே தெள்ளு தமிழ் கலை வாணி நில பொரு விண்ணப்பம் செய்திடுவே எழு தனை பொழுதும் பயனின்றி இராதென்று நாவிடில thank you so with that thank you very much i think bharathiar asks in tele tamil he asks adi shakti to give us the courage to deal with life uh, to give us good wisdom and i think that's a very appropriate uh, wish for us to ask uh, um, ishwara today on mahash shivratri as well so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, and uh, happy that i had this uh, chance to do this thank you pradeep thank you for sharing a very a uh, personal perspective uh, in many ways uh, and making it multimodal by combining uh, some music yourself singing it uh, also including images building an imagery and kind of narrativizing this in a very personal way uh, for us and as pradeep mentioned this is uh, this is a a glimpse really in in an introduction to some facets of tamil literature and as he correctly pointed out uh one would require a lot more time to make it you know uh to even attempt to start being comprehensive and uh but i'm i'm sure uh, i hope it has got people uh curious and inquisitive about uh the facets that he has presented about uh he mentioned the richness of tamil uh, which is actually one of the names of the chapters in the book that he has co-authored so people uh, i request those who are listening to us from in the different forums to uh, explore to consider you know picking up that book understanding who we are uh, uh, thanks to this translation uh, and his uh, co-author uh, prabha shri revan ji now with that uh, if there uh, are any questions specific to what pradeep has presented today uh, i request you to key it in to the q and a box and uh, pradeep will take those questions i request you to keep it specific to what he has presented and keep it as short as you can okay we'll just give it a uh, a few more seconds pradeep to see if there are yeah. any questions specific to mm. but i would i have one question of my own no. actually right uh help me understand the motivation to what motivated you to pick up this to translate that particular work right uh, was it uh, yeah help help me understand the motivation of that particular book yeah i read i read uh, en charitram in tamil many years back uh i'd written a book on tanjavur and okay. somebody said you look you can't write a book on tanjavur if you haven't read uh, uvesa and i'd written the book by then but i i was just fascinated by this man's persistence right. of overcoming so many hurdles in life it's quite an inspiration it's easy all of us have our own hurdles in life and uh, it's so easy to right. just you know succumb but he really didn't and he was really working for a much larger <laughs> cause and i wanted to you know uh, i wanted to learn more about him then i stumbled upon this set of essays and uh, i've never done translation before and okay. uh, prabhaji very kindly agreed to uh, coach me through it as it were and it's wonderful that we did what we did and um, 
learned so much more about there's one one article on you know women in tamil nadu and all but there's a lot of stuff uh, that really helped and also as a child uh, i learned uh, one poem by kalamega pulavar i think that was on all, was on how cobras okay. and lemons are the same and uh, it it uh, it really mm. fascinated me because you know how we communicate and making something interesting we're all talking about how do we get more likes on facebook and things like that right, right. uh and you know kalameya pulavar really got it right we, mm. we don't know anything about him but his poems and it's so bizarre i mean imagine fish and lice right. coconuts and dogs i mean you can't connect them at all and this man just did it and it's it's relatively simple if you if you understand fairly good tamil you can crack it yourself i think mm. these two people who is on kalameya pulavar are the ones who really pushed me on this nice wonderful so so in many ways it's actually a very personal kind of journey and maybe also transformative in some ways right yes in kind of great so yes. uh, there is one question in a box uh, there are now oh, i believe so yeah. do you do you want to see if let me have a look uh, i have a question about that- yeah so somebody's talk about you know uh, pronunciation and things like that i mean it is going to be what it is and languages have to change it's difficult sometimes i find that many of us can't pronounce r which is unique to tamil but that's the way it is i mean i i, I don't know I, i i don't think so much about the future i think for me i'd rather look at how can i take whatever i love about the language to as many people as i can so that's the way i would look at it um unfortunately yeah. somebody's asked about uh, uh kalamega pulavar's poems which is so sad nobody's ever translated them which is really really sad in fact i think some it's about time somebody actually did it yeah at least i don't know of anybody who's done it but the, all the verses are available online uh i think tamil virtual university a couple of others all of them are available online in fact i don't have the book myself even for this work i remembered the verse the first line and then i could go to a website and i could get that yeah uh comparative poems that's not the the work that i mentioned is tandi alangaram tandi alangaram is a text on how do you write good poetry and it has a lot of rules on how to create metaphors and similes so these are some of the questions that i had over here i'm i'm meg i think somewhere i think I'm that's that's active, the... and i'm quite active on social media so somebody can always message me and i'm happy to take questions later as well that's fine too Sure. Okay. Thank you so much again, Pradeep. Uh, thank you for taking time out for preparing this um, wonderful presentation, which was multimodal, and we hope it encourages people to join you in your journey, right? As you explore uh, Tamil uh, in so many different ways. Thanks for making time and for speaking with us. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank Welcome. you. Namaskar. Namaskar.